There have been many fads in the tech industry over the years, but few were so popular and now so completely ignored as the Palm Top PC. So today I have HP's mid-range model for 1997, the 360 LX, and we'll be taking a look at what this little baby laptop can actually do in 2021. A little backstory as we unbox this, the Palm Top PC, commonly referred to as a handheld PC, was Microsoft's line of PDAs starting out in the mid-90s. They ran a custom version of Windows called Windows CE, and they used black and white screens exclusively up until 1997's release of Windows CE 2.0 added support for models with 256 color screens. These devices were targeted towards business people with the focus on productivity. And at a time when smartphones were non-existent, they were usually seen as a great solution, even at their price of $500 to $1,000. At the time, most laptops weighed 10 to 12 pounds or more and cost two to $3,000. So it's easy to see the appeal of something like this. While it's thick and it's a bit on the heavy side, the footprint isn't much different than my OnePlus 7 Pro. This particular model cost $599 new, and it features a Hitachi SH3 CPU, 8 megabytes of RAM, and a 16 shade grayscale LCD touchscreen with a resolution of 640 by 240. That resolution might not sound like too much by today's standards, but the screen is actually surprisingly sharp with 104 pixels per inch. And the white-ish backlight does make the device usable even at night. If you've ever used an original Game Boy, this screen is a lot like a bigger version of that. For expansion, you've got a PCM CIA card slot that you can use for anything from modems to VGA cards. And on the other side, there's a compact flash slot for expanding your storage. Storage is interesting on these. The operating system is stored in read-only memory, and everything else, including your files, are stored in battery-backed-up RAM. That eight megabytes of random access memory I mentioned is dynamically allocated between storage and program memory, and you can change that allocation with a slide of a slider in the control panel. This does mean that if the CR2032 backup battery goes dead, all the files on the device will be lost. It really does put into perspective how far we've come in technology over the years. And speaking of batteries, this model here runs off of two AA batteries of either the alkaline or nickel metal hydride persuasion. And if you opt for the latter, they can be recharged internally with the included AC adapter. Now, in terms of battery life, one set of alkalines will last you for about eight hours of continuous use in my experience. So definitely pick up a set of rechargeables if you wanna use this on a regular basis. But at this point, you might be asking yourself, what can you actually do with this thing? Well, surprisingly, it still does almost everything it did back in 97. Back then, Wi-Fi wasn't really a thing, much less 4G LTE. So devices like this were designed to primarily be used offline. And those offline tasks, for the most part, still work today. You can create a spreadsheet in the pocket version of Excel, complete with formula support. This one I whipped up here to track the cost savings of switching to rechargeable batteries, for instance. Or you can install your own programs. You can keep track of your finances in something like Microsoft Money CE, or wind down with a game of Miss Pac-Man. There's even a classic Game Boy emulator that actually runs pretty good. Windows CE had a huge array of first-party and third-party apps and games. Back in 1997, handheld PCs were actually a big deal, and many office workers either had one or wanted one. And sure, the 360 LX isn't the fastest thing on the planet, but it does still work all these years later, and that says something. The Palm Top PC and its competitors like the Palm Pilot were, of course, eventually usurped by a burgeoning new device called the cell phone in the early 2000s, but there's still a very interesting footnote in tech history. I doubt too many people are about to ditch their smartphone and buy one of these devices to start using on a daily basis, but if you decide to, you'll be pleased to know that there is a very small but very dedicated group of folks who still use these handheld PCs. And if you want to join them, you can find them on a website called hpcfactor.com. I'll leave a link down in the description. They've amassed quite a collection of software and information that should definitely help get you started. 
for me though, aside from the occasional bit of number crunching I'll do in Excel Portable, this device is going to be more of a collector's item. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, and ring the bell so you get notified when I post new videos, and I will see you guys in the next one.